So I'm Alexis Sirkia. I co-founded GSR in 2013 together with my co-founder from Goldman Sachs. Uh, but my background is more humble. I come from a very small country that's called Andorra with only 30,000 citizens. And it's not a very well-known country like blockchain wasn't known in the past. I went on to study to Toulouse in France. Uh, I'm a software engineer. And later on, I went to, to work in aeronautics with the Airbus A380 doing some computer uh, simulations. I became a rocket scientist and I went to the European Space Center where I worked with Ariane 5 space rocket. So my, f my background is very much in engineering and making things uh, work. And one of the things that really didn't work um, was our monetary system. So it's very efficient, but there's a lot of friction like Alex commented. And this is... Um, uh, this is uh, when, I, when I decided in Andorra, I really want to make a Bitcoin exchange. Uh, but my partner, who was in Goldman Sachs, he had heard about this new startup, and it was called Ripple, and it was a few engineers and um, uh, a past CEO, and he told me to come over, and we started market-making for them. And uh, that really got us distracted, and we couldn't get to do the exchange we wanted to do, and we just focused on on doing, oh, here is, and we just focused on, on the market making. But along the way, we learned about all the other new coins and all the other new platforms and systems like Ethereum. I really tried to convince my, my partner, who was a banker, hey, this Ethereum is going to be great. Uh, let's get into Ethereum. And I wrote him a very long email, and he said, OK, I, I haven't had time to read it. I trust your judgment. <laughs> and my other partner, um, well, it's all about traction with this stuff, and this stuff was Ethereum, which we luckily got in at 27 cents, because today it's like 200, or like it's a thousand-fold profit that we got on that. So, uh, to change the... Okay. So, I'll compare the, the blockchain disruption to other disruptions we have had in the past. And when I, ask, um, when I ask people, who is the creator of the combustion engine? Does anybody here know? Like, nobody knows, I get. Uh, so we have this massive invention that was like, very important for much of the second industrial revolution. And uh, it's what powered our, our factories uh, and what made uh, possible to do the cars. So this was invented by uh, Samuel Brown, a small Englishman. In 1826, he put it in a, he modified the steam engine in order for it to burn, and he put it in a carriage. And it was only 80 years later, in 1908, that Henry Ford actually put the, this engine, and we got mass adoption. It was very noisy, explosive, and dangerous. Nobody wanted to be, everybody wanted faster horses. Nobody wanted um, to be sat beside an explosive engine. It was crazy. And that's a bit what we have with, um, with blockchain. So Satoshi Nakamoto was the inventor or the group of inventors who brought us blockchain. It's this mysterious, mysterious personage as well. And he gifted mankind with this um, great invention that he, he mentioned, Alex Tapscott. And this, uh, this gift is called blockchain. And blockchain today, it's noisy, explosive, and dangerous. <laughs> Banks don't want it near them. Uh, everybody's very wary. Like, would you trust your money on a blockchain? Uh, it's the same thing as uh, driving a car in the early 1800s. The technology is experimental. But we all see the potential and, you know, we all have these dreams of everything that can be done with blockchain. I will explain further on. So, in the telecom disruption, the telecom disruption, it was a bit similar. Um, there is this uh, psychological phases of um, uh, when somebody dies or somebody has a grave sickness like cancer, we deny it, then we get angry, then we want to bargain. And finally, 
we, we, sorry, then we get sad, and then we finally accept it. And with Bitcoin, it was the same. Uh, banks, uh, they said, uh, no, it's not true, it's fake money. The lobbies uh, tried to push governments to ban it. We have had this in Korea, in China, and everywhere. We have had a lot of pressure from the governments because um, really we are uh, bringing a disruptive uh, technology that is really going to change their things. So after the phases of anger, and uh, I have this small kid, and he, um, he sometimes does this uh, fuss, and like he cries, and so sometimes I compare the governments to, to my small kid that is doing, having these tantrums. So after these phases of tantrums, um, governments and banks and companies are seeing the, the profits of blockchain, and they are embracing it, and now there's a, we're in the bargaining phase. So we are uh, creating legislation. Uh, governments are trying to adapt the new industry. And some uh, companies are already like accepting, you know, some companies uh, who will not accept it will end up like Kodak, and uh, you know, they will be sad and uh, they will be not there. So I really compare the um, Bitcoin and the blockchain to the engine. And uh, we have so many blockchains, and with the engine, we also have a few. So we have a, a petrol engine or a diesel engine. And it doesn't really matter. Some people will want the, the more powerful engine, and some people will want the cheaper engine that can take us longer. But the two engines can, can move the car. And if we have a super tanker, so it's heavy fuel, so we will modify the engine a bit. And we ha we, if we have a jet airplane, we will use kerosene, so that's another engine. And with blockchain, it's the same. We have different engines that have different purposes, but there is a lot of overlap between, between the different blockchains that we have. Okay? So, it's just a matter of adopting the right standard. And it's governments and people and lobbies of industries like bankers that are going to decide which blockchain suits their need. So on one side, we have these Bitcoin maximalists. They're the crazy ones. They're the ones that, sorry, <laughs> not sure. They're the ones that are like, Bitcoin is the only way to go. And this, they are like, uh, Bitcoin is half of the market cap of crypto today. It is really that important. Um, when Bitcoin goes up, everything goes up. And when Bitcoin goes down, everything follows. So really, Bitcoin today is the one that is steering the, the industry. This is because uh, Bitcoin is not only the oldest blockchain, so it, ha it has this first mover ad uh, advantage, but it's also the one that is the safest because it has, in this proof of work mechanism, it has the most hash power and it's the safest blockchain. So if I were to put today my will and testament and put the record in a blockchain, I would probably be using the safest blockchain, which is Bitcoin. I think it makes sense. But then we have these uh, bankers and these lobbyists of bankers from Wall Street, and they have adopted uh, another ecosystem that is called Ripple. And Ripple can do things that Bitcoin can't. With Bitcoin, you can transfer money from one person to another. And in Ripple, you can exchange currencies. I can send euros from one country and receive Filipino pesos uh, on the other way back. It's a two-way mechanism of exchange that you don't have with Bitcoin. So it's a decentralized exchange. The Ripple fans will, will say it's faster, it, it only takes a couple seconds to, um, to settle. And then you have the geeks like myself and uh, Vitalik Buterin. Vitalik Buterin, the inventor of Ethereum. I don't know if you've, if you've seen him, he's very geek and very skinny and always with the laptop and hidden. So, us programmers, we want the flexibility of having a blockchain. We can program and we can create anything, so we can develop our own idea. <laughs> so, on one side, you have the very safe ledger of uh, Bitcoin. On the other side, you have uh, the Ripple blockchain, which is very fast, a couple seconds to send money and transact, and it's a specific case. 
And on, a, on another case, you have Ethereum, which is uh, just do what you want, and you have a big platform and ecosystem. And after this, uh, this major three, we have a lot of inventions to, for different use cases, like Monero to send money privately without people knowing who, the, who sent the money. So that's a use case. Um, and uh, IOTA, it's a different type of blockchain, which is very scalable. And there's hundreds of use cases, but it really doesn't matter. And that's what I, what I like to end again. So I'm a blockchain enthusiast, but as long as we're all using the same gas, and you know, in, in Korea, maybe you have uh, petrol and diesel, and in Brazil, maybe they have alcohol from sugarcane. So it really just is about uh, adopting the common standard on whatever industry you might be. So the people, they talk so much about blockchain, but blockchain is very small. The amount of money that went into blockchain is on the realms between six and 20 billion dollars. So there is a 200 billion market cap today. But if you check at one of the stable coins that is tethered, that is backs most of the stable value, that's only a couple billion dollars. That's only a couple of those pallets that back the stable coin tether. And the real money that went into crypto through exchanges, it's somewhere between six and 20 billion. The, most of the market cap uh, comes from profits of Bitcoin and Ethereum that were reinvested into the ecosystem. So, but it's not a lot of value that went into this ecosystem. And this is why, even though he said we're in the fourth industrial revolution, today it looks more like the 0 0.4. This is the state of, <laughs> of crypto today. We want to work for the 4.0, but now we're in, in, in 0 0.4. What is coming next? So the cases of mass adoption, he, he also mentioned a few. I like uh, these tokens are going to back real uh, value. And today, one of the really big markets in tokenized assets is uh, gaming. Uh, this Facebook uh, gems uh, that you buy or Counter-Strike uh, uh, guns, this is actually a uh, hundred billion uh, industry. So a hundred billion, so ten times more money went into the gaming in industry. And uh, 40 of those, so four times bigger than crypto in one year and 50, to the, 50 this year, went into in-game digital assets that are tradable. So that's a lot of value and we don't talk a lot about it because it's currently centralized. But soon uh, users are starting to trade currencies, uh, so I'm trading a, a tank for a gun, and or it's, it's happening already, or for Facebook uh, credits. Second big, uh, bigger use case even is loyalty points, and AL will sp speak about loyalty points in details, but loyalty is huge compared to, to crypto. It's uh, 50 times bigger. It's a 500 billion market out of which 200 billion of assets are traded today. And these assets, they are, for example, miles from Emirates, Starbucks points, and it's... Um, we have had to create the centralized alliances. On, on one side, we have um, Star Alliance, One World, and you can trade the points within this alliance. But blockchain brings something new. With blockchain, instead of trusting the alliance, we can trust the blockchain, and we can trade the points or the miles, we can trade them between different companies. So we can trade Starbucks points for Emirate miles. So we can, uh, it's really going to be one of the big use cases of mass adoption of use case. Maybe it's going to be the, the car that Henry Ford built. But this is the really, really big one. So I just put it for comparison, like in size. Um, my math is not so good, but it's at least a hundred times bigger than, than crypto. <laughs> and this is only uh, phase one. Um, I was talking to Brock Pierce, he will have a panel today, and he said it was a quadrillion market. Today, uh, stock is uh, 70 trillion of tradable assets in the stock exchanges. In, in Korea, you have uh, 3.6 million companies. 
And of those 3.6 million, uh, most of them are small and medium enterprises. 4,000 are the bigger enterprises, and of those 4,000, only a few are trading publicly. So, why can the small and medium enterprises not trade their equity publicly? It's not fair. And really, the, the reason is because it requires a lot of supervision, and we don't have a flexible mechanism, and we don't have a government to control 3.6 million entities. But if we give part of that control to the blockchain, and if we give um, part of that, um, and if we adopt this technology, small business owners and medium business owners and even big business owners that don't want to go through the traditional IPO route, they can uh, securize, uh, tokenize their equity and they can create what we call STOs, where the security is tokenized and tradable in the centralized exchanges or in centralized exchanges, but it's tradable in another category than big companies that are currently trading in IPOs. We, we estimate in GSR, uh, the company I co-founded, that this is going to be um, one trillion uh, very soon. Okay. I think uh, every single individual in this room probably has an industry where uh, blockchain will be applicable. In automotive in Korea, Hyundai has been working to create um, telemetry systems that can communicate with the manufacturer and, uh, and they can send the data to the, and they can send updates to your car. So before, before you're sending it to service, you will already know uh, if your car is wrong. Hyundai will, and maybe you receive the parts or you will be asked to send. Uh, this uh, this uh, communication between cars and manufacturers will only be possible through a, a protocol that we trust. And these devices, we call this Internet of Things that will be in cars and fridges and everywhere, they will need a secure protocol to, in order to transact and send information. And the blockchain is there for that. The banking, of course, every, it's, the, it's the industry everyone knows. And charity. I can send money to charity and I have full traceability of where my money went. Or even government. I, I pay my taxes and I know where my money went. That would be very nice. <laughs> Education. You have a, a diploma and you're a doctor. You have the proof on the blockchain. Or you're a translator, interpreter. You had some studies. The proof is on the blockchain. So it's, very, it's, it's, it's a good use case. He talked about data, and that's one, of the, that's one of the industries that gets me excited with blockchain, because now data is not tradable. So as market makers, we like uh, things that are tradable, and data is not tradable. Um, why? Well, for similar reasons that uh, equity from small companies are not tradable. We don't have a trustless environment to trade this data. And, uh, if you have a model that is, has some prediction models, you will be able to put uh, trade those models. So this is something that is that is coming. Government and voting, like uh, who doesn't want a democracy that is uncorruptible? And instead of putting the trust in the people that are counting the votes, we give that uh, to a blockchain that cannot be uh, modified. Law enforcement. Inst we have contracts to execute the. Um, we have contracts to execute the orders. Um, one very cool use case is anti-piracy. So, for the first time, we now can create a digital asset that cannot be replicated. So, this can be used by media in order to deliver content that cannot be replicated and is unique. It can be sold, however, and traded. So, if I buy a film, I, I, I can own the rights of viewership, but I can trade it. So, this is a new, new industries that are coming. Historically, we have given our trust to third parties and institutions. We let the banks uh, keep our money, and we asked our governments to be. Um, we asked our governments to make sure that the rules that our parliaments uh, voted are are taken into consideration. So, 
we give the trust to institutions and we tell our, govern, our governments how to do it. And this with blockchain is something we can change. We can now give the, we can now give the authority to a decentralized network of, compu of computers to look after our assets and we can let the blockchain govern our, we can let, let the blockchain make sure that the rules that our parliament votes are, are trusted. I'd like to finish with this slide. So, technologies like the phone, you know, they really have brought us together in the sense uh, I can speak with my children who are now in Thailand and they're so accessible. But they have also distanced us as a society. We now are on our phones and not paying attention to, to the people around us. Uh, we get, uh, so all this technology um, is actually dividing our society. I really think blockchain is one of the technologies that will bring our society together. Because our society is based on trust. Trust is what allows us to create companies. Uh, we are friends with those people who we trust. And blockchain, I call the protocol of trust. And I think because we will have trust, we will, ha we will bring the people together. So thank you and <laughs>